Welcome to the Mad Mixologist. On this episode, our first episode, I am making my favorite cocktail. Yes, again, on video, my favorite cocktail. We're also going to make ice so clear you can read through it. We're going to turn oranges into cold hard cash. And I'm traveling to England. We're going to have an interview with Tom Dyer at the end of the episode. I'm Dean Cerniels, and you've just joined the Mad Mixologist. This is the Mad Mixologist. Some people say my techniques are crazy. I think they're mad. Here's my very favorite cocktail of all time. I've been making it for 20 years. Matt Jones actually helped me develop it over time. And as I have found better ingredients, I've improved the cocktail. <laughs> Starting with some good quality, well-aged bourbon. I get two ounces of bourbon. Half an ounce of 100% agave nectar. And a couple of dashes of chocolate bitters. The agave nectar can congeal sometimes if you pour it directly over top of ice. It's like honey, it gets really hard and you can't get the flavors out of it. Lots of ice. Putting the bowl of the spoon on the glass, pushing the bowl of the spoon. We're going to make the spoon go up and down. There are fancier beakers and whatnot, but going along with my mixing glass mechanics, I want to show off how to make the cocktail right here in a mixing glass. Something to make it even smoother and perhaps a little more mad is to get a magic wand. Yes, this is Harry Potter's magic wand. One of the teachers at Gryffindor gave it to me. And as a little tribute, that's Gaz's finger. Now we're not gonna shake this drink, we're just stirring it, getting that cold ice off the outside of the ice cubes. When I ask for this cocktail in a bar, I always say stir it forever, and then a little longer. Make sure that we've dissolved it just perfectly. I wanna put this down on the table in front of the guest when it's perfect. I don't want them to have to sip on it and wait until it gets better. Uh, I want it to be perfect when I put it down. Clear block of ice. Later on in this episode, we're going to discuss in great detail how to make perfectly clear ice for your bar. Straining over that perfectly clear ice cube. Or zest. Again, later on in this episode, we're gonna make this into 20 bucks. Watch. I'm just gonna take a piece of this orange zest off of here. A Couple of pieces, I wanna show you something. A lot of bartenders like to take all of the zest right off of their oranges to make sure that there's no pith. Pith can actually add some, uh, some bad flavors and bitterness. And then they try to flame with them. And it makes it very difficult because you're actually pushing the oils through the back as well as the front. All right, I'm gonna heat the coin up a little bit. Run that around the outside of the rim and drop it right inside. The chocolate old fashioned. I'm Dean Cerniels and this is the Mad Mixologist. That perfect ice cube in here was handcrafted with this. In the next scene on the Mad Mixology. This is a cross-section of a giant ice cube. If you have a small ice cube, you'll see impurities in it. 
all we need to do is extract that clear ice. Just like a pond in the, in the winter time, the sides and the bottom are insulated. The cold air pushes down from the top and pushes all the impurities right into the bottom. I have taken this whole cooler full of water and I added blue food coloring to it because even that is not going to escape the directional freezing. So look, if I take this top layer off, this has only been in there for, uh, I don't know, 24 hours or so, it's perfectly clear, yet that blue water is being pushed down. But how do we get it into drinks? This one here is three quarters of the way. It's, uh, it's just about 24 hours into a freeze. So a lot of bartenders, when you smashing this open so that they can get to it, score it with a knife and bang it and knock it and, it's quite painful, actually. So here's what it looks like, totally frozen. There is a bit of manhandling in this. Do not run water over this. Even me rubbing it like this could possibly make it crack. What we need to do with ice when it comes fresh out of the freezer is we have to let it sit in the room for a little bit. Just let it come in and socialize a little bit. So here's the big block right now. You can see the impurities in the bottom and even the little bubbles that all bubble all the way up to the top to the surface here where it's perfectly clear. We're gonna just cut the top off of this to make perfectly clear ice cubes. But we need a fun way to do it now, don't we? Or a mad way. I've actually been hired for special events just to carve ice cube blocks to put into people's specialty bourbon cocktails. Here we have an electric chainsaw. In the oil part to, to oil the chain, I've actually used uh, vegetable oil. But we're gonna rinse the ice off anyway, so anything on it is gonna come off. Wanna do a shout out to Gary, Gary, Gary Groover right now. Thank you, sir. Here we go. I'm just gonna cut two inch blocks. Yes. Last, but certainly not least, we take just regular ice cube trays, lay them in the top, fill this whole cooler full of water, but put holes in the bottom of the ice cube trays. Your ice cubes will come out perfectly clear. Look at that, perfectly clear ice cubes. And if you wanna play with it, get some little tiny figurines, there's a little otter in this one. Look how cute he is. And there's a little penguin in here. He's frozen, but they're used to that. All right. Lots of lots of fun you can have. Clear ice is super easy to make. Yes, there's a little bit of a mess, but it's just a little bit of water. It took me about 45 minutes to clean up the mess I made, but it's totally worth it. I've got a full cooler full of blocks. They're all perfectly imperfect. They're perfect. I love each one. We zest an orange for the top of that chocolate old fashioned, but what do you do with the orange when you're finished zesting it? We're gonna turn this orange into a tip jar filler right here.
we've got this orange and we've already zested it. And sometimes bartenders just like to throw it out. I think I could borrow some money, maybe a five or a 10. The larger the bill, the better, of course. Ah, very good. Thank you very much. In fact, why don't I let you write your name on the bill? That way we know whose bill it is. Very good. Nice and subtle. So that's your bill, correct? We've got the 20, 120. This orange, could I get you to hold on to that orange, pretty please? Hold it up in the air. All right, so the entire bar can see it. We've got the bill in the air. Now. You blow on there, put some, put some luck on there. Very good. Here we go. All right. One, two, three. The bill is flowing through the air. I don't know if you guys got to see it, but the bill actually flew right through the air. Let's see if it actually landed in the orbit. Can I take a look? All right. Let's take a look. Let's see if we open it up. Can you see anything in there? Let's see, look, if you dig in really deep, actually see the bill right inside the orange. It's a little juicy, I apologize. But tell me, is that your name? So tell you what, you can keep this as a souvenir of the show, all right? And if you want, I can just, uh, I'll hang on to this and clean it up for you, all right? And uh, we'll give it back to you at the end of the night. <laughs> so at the end of the show, I always like to offer a souvenir to the audience and ask if I can keep a souvenir from my tip jar. <laughs> Fill in the tip jar on the Mad Mixologist. Here we are in London town. London City, hey, that's Tom Dyer back there. We're in front of Lackey Cave. We're here, man. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're here with Christian Del Pesh from Argentina, who works at the Shadow Bar in Las Vegas, baby. Vegas, baby. He's the current winner of the World Working Flair Bartending Competition in the Cayman Islands. He's got some great bottle flipping, uh, juggling moves that he's going to demonstrate for you right now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Cheers. You're going to enjoy this. Can I give you some advice on those moves? Sure. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are in London town. London City. Hey, that's Tom Dyer back there. We're in front of Lackey Cave. We're here, baby. Hey, Georgie, how are you? Hey, Georgie. Hey.
hands. So I was, like, I was thinking, I was thinking maybe, maybe like properly good music would be something like. My Lord, my Lord. Welcome to the Savoy. No flare allowed behind the American bar bar. You only got every flare. You're gonna get us thrown out, dude. That's Harry Crow that's shaking. Whatever. He got me. That's Tom Dyer. He's famous. <laughs> Tom Dyer's in the house. Boom. Wait a second. I'm in the house. Welcome to the studio. Appreciate it a lot, and uh, welcome to sunny London. <laughs> I've just found out it's your first time here. Thanks once again for letting me come onto your channel. Uh, I truly, truly love the videos you put out already. Thank and you. I can't wait to see the rest. Thank you. Uh, and it's a pleasure to bust out this cocktail, which was in your first episode. True, true. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, this whole month is all about the chocolate old fashioned. Fantastic. Yeah. So I'll try and do it um, justice to the best of my ability. Cool. So we're going to make the chocolate old fashioned. And we're gonna do a little trick along the way to pour this into our mixing tin. Here we go. So we're gonna go boom, boom, boom. There's one ounce right there. There's two ounce and a little bit more because I'm greedy. Half an ounce of our real agave syrup. Two dashes or really three of our chocolate bitters. Little spoon spin. And then off we go. See, I like to use my spoon upside down, very unconventional. You can use it any way you want. You can use it sideways if you really want to. Yeah. Boom. Get yourself a little flame going and bosh. Delicious. Delicious. I can smell it from here. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that little sequence that we did with the bourbon. Just move this to one side. Um, it's really simple. It's just one part of it where you have to learn how to move two objects at the same time. So, the first, move, first part you need to learn is with the shaker, which is literally a throw over the arm. So you have your shaker in the left hand, and you're gonna throw it over your right hand for a single spin, okay? Uh, and then I'm gonna use this Flareco bottle, which if you didn't know, was created by Mr. Dean Sir Niels. And all that is doing is this, okay? Which I've called a Jason in some of my other videos, uh, but some people call it a swipe. Okay, and you want to put those two together. So you're going to hold the bottle in what we call a tennis grab, which is like this, and you're going to hold the tin in what we call a tennis grab. So if I put them down, so with the bottle on the bar top and the tin, you're just going to grab the tin like this, and with your right hand, thumbs down, grab the bottle. And then you want to do those two movements almost at the same time. But first of all, start with the tin, and then the bottle, okay? And then tin, bottle, and then try and do it at the same time. Boom. Then you drop the bottle down, and then you can do a thumb roll with the tin, okay? If you're not sure how to do a thumb roll, you can just do a single spin like this, turn it over, and then come to pour. And once you're pouring, you twist down and you cut off. And then once you finish, you do a single spin to the opposite hand. So all together, tin, bottle, thumbs down, grab, okay? Start in this position, throw the tin and the swipe the bottle at the same time. Drop the bottle down, then thumb roll or single spin with the tin, come over to pour. Twist, cut, put the bottle down, switch, pick the bottle up, and finish off your pour, and job's good one. Boom! There we go. I can smell it already. It's great, isn't it? Mm. This is like my dream. Oh. Delicious. Yeah. Made by a pro. Man. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of boozy drinks, but that I could just down. 
That's because you stirred it forever. Exactly. It makes a massive difference. It really does. And the chocolate really comes out in it, and the bourbon is just good, and the flamed orange just makes it taste like a, a dessert. Like, no, I'm Tom Dye, bartender, the channel. Uh, I teach a lot of flair moves. I do cocktails as well. Actually, if you like this video, don't forget to like it. Really help Dean out. Uh, he's, got, he's got loads of content coming, which you're going to see very, very soon. But like it, drop a comment in the comments box below. Let us know what you think. And I'm sure you're going to see a lot of really cool content coming through the channel very, very soon. Hello guys, I'm at the Amsterdam Ice Bar. Kind of ironic as we close off this first episode of the Mad Mixologist. Surrounded by pirates and clear eyes. Hope you guys enjoy your chocolate old fashions. I want to say thank you very much to Tom Dyer for showing us a little bit of flair. To Allison, thank you very much for putting up with me as I put all my creative through you and uh, make you watch all my videos over and over and over again. And that goes for Megan and Jade as well. Hope you guys enjoy the episodes as much as I enjoy putting them together for you. I've got a stranger here in my bar. I don't know who he is, <laughs> but I'm going to show him the door. <laughs>